today yeah. is a great day because yes. our Mr. Cool mini split systems just got delivered mm -hmm. and we are, that's taking priority over everything. We're yes. jumping ship on everything else because air conditioning. Yes, and it gets, it gets a little hot around here sometimes. Yes. Like, right? So we got uh, three uh, 12K or 12,000 BTU units. We got one for the great room, we got one for the back bedroom of ours, and also the boys loft. The reason why we went with Mr. Cool uh, split system versus a standard, I guess, HVAC system, I guess it's a lot more efficient. Mm -hmm. Um, I would need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on my solar equipment to run a full-time AC system in here versus having those mini splits because we can actually have zones on and off where we're at and where we want to use them. So if we're out here hanging out watching a movie, um, there's no need to cool that back room or cool the loft. So we can turn a few things off, run out here, stay cool down here, and uh, live our life. It just makes more sense for us, mm -hmm. being that we are off-grid and we are yes. on solar. And also what's really nice about this system is that it, when it was delivered, everything came with it. There were only a few things that we had to get from Lowe's, but mm -hmm. other than that, it was pretty much like a self-contained system, which makes yes. it easy on us. Mr. Cool System's a DIY system. So everything, all the refrigerants are pre-charged, you hook everything up and uh, you don't need an HVAC guy to charge the system for you. You just need Josh. Or Aaron, <laughs> whatever. I don't know about that. <laughs> It also came with a template to lay everything out to get this thing mounted. You also have to draw a three and a half inch diameter hole. It's all set up for you. Just put it on the wall. You mark it out on the wall. Mark your center point of your uh, hole you need to drill. And wham, bam, you're done. Mount the bracket, draw your hole, and you put the, the unit up. extension on there so I don't have to go on the outside and drill back in. This right here lets me drill through the wall, gives me the extension I need. The second hole, you want that to be a slight bit lower than this first hole. Reason being because there's a drain line coming down through here. This unit does create condensation and needs to drain so you need a slight slope so it drains out. You don't want the thing being slight high or even because it could back up but you want to make it a little bit lower.
So the first unit is up and installed. The interior work is at least done for right now. You could leave the unit just like this, the way that it is, but we do plan on actually building it in in a sort of way that it's kind of disguised just so it better fits the interior design of our home but we mm -hmm. still you know have all of the airflow and everything that we need for it yes um we would have put it more i guess in the center of the room but uh us having an a-frame <laughs> right i guess it's a little bit of an issue yeah. um having it on a slant wall like that it would leak out it does create condensation and need to drain out outside the house if we have it in an angle it'll leak out the front and we'll have a mess on our hands so we put it pretty much in the only that spot we have in this area yeah is that wall right there the best spot so it the blows best, out that way exactly so so it blows out this way everywhere else it would either be hitting like the top of cabinets or blowing yeah. away that we don't want it to blow so yep best but, spot for this yep but it's above thousand okay. btu it should heat and cool around 500 to 550 square feet and that's what we're working with right here mm -hmm. so we should be fine yep so one of three is done and now we're on to the next one bedroom bedroom About sixteenth of an inch out is fine. I'll make that work. Um, so we have enough to box around this, keep it hidden, put the crown molding up. We'll figure it all out, make it all work when the time comes. Shovel broke. Today's just not our day, Josh. <laughs> All right. You got another one? I do. It's uh, a wood one, but it's uh, a little loose, but it'll work. Ready to try this again? Take two. <laughs> All right, so we gotta raise it up an inch and a half. Good enough, good. Here you go. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> We have both our exterior units set. The reason why they're staggered is because we need clearances on all sides of these units. This portion right here, or this side right here, requires 24 inch clearance, 79 inches in the front, 12 inches on the far side, and 12 inches on the back. So we have all of our clearances met. Um, that's the only reason why we didn't put them right in line like that. It would have been easier and nicer, but we had to stagger them.
This is the third exterior unit that we got uh, placed on this pad here. This one is at the front of the house because it is going to be closest to where the interior unit that cools the front portion of our house where our living room and our kitchen are at. And we only have a certain amount of like footage on 25, the- 25 feet. Okay. On the coils or what is it called? On the line set, which is the copper line that goes from the indoor unit to the outdoor unit. And I think it comes, you can get you to choose a 12 foot coil or 25 foot coil. And we chose 25 foot because uh, we, we have, needed it. Yeah, we have angled walls everywhere. <laughs> yes. If we had if a standard house with a vertical wall and a roof, this job would be a lot easier. Yes. And placement of these units would have been a lot easier also. Yes, we because we were limited, obviously, most of the walls in our house are angled, but we were able to find places that this was going to work for yep. us. However, two units had to be on one side of the house and then we had this one on the other side. But the point here is, is our we're going to have a deck because we are at the front door, which is right here. Mm -hmm. There's obviously no steps or anything built off of there yet. That's an upcoming project, but eventually this is actually going to sit underneath the deck and the bottom of the deck will be like kind of closed in. I mean, not. Yeah, so you won't see it. Yeah, completely. Won't be that, won't, yeah, you won't see it. Yeah, so that's the plan. And uh, she said is, is twice in a row. <gasps> Oops. And you just dropped our daughter on the ground, so. She tripped. <laughs> you want mommy to kiss you, boo boo? <laughs> Is that all better? <laughs> It all burned down in fire Sifting through a history of wants and gain the poison of desire These passerbys and money men will tell you what you need but they don't know We had it all but then we lost it The roles we played were a defense Storm rolled in. I'm not sure how much more Josh is going to get done. What do you think? You calling it? Probably for a little bit. Oh, I'm assuming it's going to stop. Probably a quick thunderstorm.
So we got rained out. Well, at least Aaron has my favorite Peruvian chicken in the oven, right? Only the best for you, Ben. <laughs> Thank you. The rain's not gonna stop until like 8.30 at night, so we're gonna wire the panel up real quick, get ahead of a few things. We're gonna lock it out. Probably not really gonna go use tape instead. It's gonna be safe, just don't turn anything on. And uh, we're probably done for the night. I'm at the unit at the front door. It's gonna be all under the deck. Um, we have three disconnects to mount. We have uh, three units. Each one needs a disconnect. So looking at what we got here, we have our line side coming in. This comes from the panel. This is our load side that goes to the equipment to my left. And if you look right here, it says line, line. And these are your, are your load terminals right there. Um, all I'm gonna do is bring my black hot. We'll tie into the line side. We'll go ahead and tie the load side into right here. The neutrals, I'm gonna go ahead and splice through. I'm not required to um, have the neutrals on disconnect. So we're gonna go ahead and splice those through, call that done. We're gonna take our ground wires, go into the ground bus right there and be done. Two's white, three is black, and it came factory with these little steak cons on there. I'm gonna put my wire underneath that. I don't have them, but I got the little plates there, so I don't need them technically, so we should be fine without them. Got my ground going on. Drop it neutral, put them under the plate right there, tighten them down. Got my hot. This unit's 100% completed, it's ready to get turned on, so we're gonna go ahead and go inside, fire it up real quick, make sure everything operates correctly, and then uh, we'll go back outside and finish the other two units up. All right, so we're gonna do a test run real quick. We've got power on, just beeped. Direction says to uh, go ahead and turn it on, put it down to cool, let it run for five minutes. I put it down to as cold as it can go, let it run for five minutes if it's cold, then switch up the heat, do the same thing, the guess is to check both lines, make sure it's heating and cooling. So let's go ahead and do that. Opened up. That's 62. Barely hear it. I know, it's quiet. It beats the hell out of the other one we have. It does. It's on it now, you can barely even hear it. So once you put the deck over the top, you're not gonna pretty much hear anything, hopefully. It's not bad. It's not like it's an outdoor unit in your house when you have a whole HVAC and so everything's blowing and roaring. This thing's quiet as can be. It is. Which is nice. Oh, it is cold. <laughs> 
<laughs> How's that feel? Feels good. little snack for the walk. <laughs> the cover's off. We've got about five terminals we got to hook up to. It says one, two, three, L and N. So looking at that, you see the L is our line side, which actually is a hot that comes from the breaker. Our N is our neutral side that comes from the panel. Then you have one, two, and three. Look at this uh, cable right here that came attached to the indoor unit. You have a red, white, and a black nameplate right here red's number one white's number two and black is number three so look at this nameplate for this uh system right here it's 120 volts it says uh max fuse our breaker size is gonna be 20 amps and your mca which is your min minimum circuit capacity shows 15 amps and this is where a lot of people are gonna have a heart attack possibly a stroke <laughs> um you size your wire off the mca okay you, you don't need to size your wire off the max fuse the max fuse is, is the breaker size which is 20 amp your MCA shows 15 amps. So I can actually pull a 14 wire to here, attach it, and attach it to the 20 amp breaker. That's where everybody probably gonna try to kill me here. But it's not a receptacle, it's not a lighting load, stuff like that needs to be a 12 wire on a 20 amp circuit. But for something like this, piece of equipment with a motor and everything, you go by your nameplate. The minimum cir circuit amp capacity is 15 amps. That's what you size your wire off of. So we're using 14 wire, the max fuse is your breaker size, 20 amp. So we're gonna put a 14 wire and 20 amp breaker. It's 100% legit, it's code, where that's completely acceptable. So that's what we're gonna do. So even looking at the booklet that it gave us, it shows uh, different model series. We have a 9K and 12K, we have a 12K series. Appliance amp shows 15 amps, and it shows you gotta pull a 14 wire. So you put a 14 two here, even though it's going on 20 amp breaker. So it's legit, so don't, Get all crazy in the comment section because it's, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> of the house it is more suitable to have the disconnects mounted on a rack near the equipment. Once the rack is built and the final two disconnects are installed we are left with the final unit in the boys loft which is our dilemma. We think we have a plan but we will have to wait and see how it all plays out during install. Our home runs on solar power. When we designed our system we took into account all of our appliances but not the potential load of air conditioning. Can our system handle this new load? Or are we asking too much from a home powered by the sun?